Hi guys, how are you? Welcome back to the garden on a beautiful spring day. It is lunchtime, which means it is a time of the day where it is supposed to be nice and warm. Kind of is, there's still a chilly wind, but you know what, I'm at the point where I feel like I'm over winter jackets. I don't want to wear another dang winter jacket, scarf, hats, I just want to say hat bands, I never wear hat bands, but you know, all that stuff. Everything is in the closet and I'm like, no, I'm over it. I find myself a nice project somewhere where there isn't so much wind, where there is sun, it's going to be nice and toasty hopefully, so we're going to do something on the driveway. And next to the driveway, I can show you kind of like the truth of an embarrassment. I hope you can all identify with it. You know that um, there's a lot of renovation going on in the house and the house also has an attic. An attic most of the time means like you just put your stuff there, you stuff it in literally, and then you kind of forget about it. And there was a time we were like, okay, we need to go up there, clean it. And there was so much stuff where we thought, oh my, what is it, what to do with that? So definitely gonna dump all of that bit after bit now. But yeah. Hope you can identify with the situation as well, but today is not about that. Today is about planting. I found something really intriguing in the garden center, which already stands on the driveway for a good week or so, I believe. Goes in a container into my little pot garden arrangement. I think it's gonna fill me with so much joy and excitement. Hope you're excited to join me in my today's project. Moment of truth, please tell me that you all have gone through a big cleaning session and this is exactly how it looks in your household as well. To be fair, there's still like some things from the banister, for example, that was upstairs that we didn't need anymore, so that came down and then some boxes here of the hardwood floors because the hardwood floors is a chevron and that means that there was a lot of leftovers and we don't really use it anymore I suppose so I think this is going to go away as well and a very old tv that is heavy as the h word basically so oof no that is definitely going to go as well but what I'm going to do today if we swing around oh so lovely in the garden clear blue skies is standing right here so I want to plant a wisteria that was trained as a tree and I think this is rather fabulous so beautiful there is a label on it hooray so I can tell you what I'm growing it's wisteria shiro captain fuji and it blooms in white even though the label that was attached here isn't purple but I think it's quite interesting because so far I grow two wisteria they're both purple flowers and having a white one will be very cute as well and if you take a look it's full and full of bots so all of those are going to come to bloom very soon so it's going to be a cascade of white flowers just spilling down this beautiful tree and I'm going to keep it as a tree I think this is just the beauty of it so let's see how it is going to thrive in its container and this is exactly where I want to put it there is already a container and it's going to go into this little pot arrangement somewhere here need to just well, make some space, need to see how I'm gonna do it, but I think in a combination, the white wisteria would be very cute in here. If you follow my channel already for quite a while, you know that I'm growing already two wisterias in the garden. One is just next to the garage in the formal kitchen garden, and it's about to come to bloom, I think in May as well, which is gonna be so beautiful, because it has this very long cascading purple flowers, and you know, I love purple, so definitely, this is one of my favorite plants. And the second one just grows next to the terrace, so you might remember back in February, I suppose I built a trellis as a support system for that wisteria because I want to train it into a tree shape as well So obviously that's going to be a lot and a lot taller to what this little beauty is This is roughly maybe half a meter I would suppose and I want to keep it in this size even though you know wisteria is bound to be very very vigorous and you might think does it really work in a container but I can tell it does because I've experience with that in my apartment in Dusseldorf on the balcony I actually do have two wisterias in containers already for 10 years and they survived. They survived a lot. They survived a month without any watering what I thought, all right, those wisterias are probably, they had it, but they always came back. And the intriguing thing about it is that in the first year or two, the wisterias, they will grow with a lot of vigorous top growth, but then over the time, they just slow down and they almost stay in their structure, which is really nice because you have a nice shape, you have a nice silhouette, but you don't need to come in there with your secateurs over and over again. And obviously that has to do with the fact that a wisteria when it grows in a container there's only so much soil and only so many nutrition so at one point there isn't as much and the roots just can't grow any further because they are probably completely pop bound in that container so what I would always recommend you is try and come in with a liquid fertilizer and make sure that your plant keeps on going and will be happy when I say that wisterias are very vigorous, that doesn't only mean the top growth is vigorous, the bottom part of the roots are as well. Because the first couple of years in Dusseldorf, I had the wisteria in a plastic container. 
which was already quite sturdy. But over time, what happened is that rectangle container ch changed its shape and it was kind of just like growing outwards, outwards. I was like, oh, okay, now is the point where we really need to do something. So I really came in with a kitchen knife to cut that dang wisteria out. All those roots put it into a good solid concrete container and now it's good. So just as a hint of advice, whenever you put your wisteria in a container, choose a nice sturdy container, no flimsy plastic. So this should be just fine. I suppose this is some sort of concrete. This is just from the local um, hardware store. And this is the container that I love. Most of the pots that you find in my garden are exactly this one here because I love the color and I really love how it ages. That was about the wist uh, wisteria roots and how vigorous they are. Obviously the top growth is very vigorous as well. And when it comes to that, you need to come in and prune it in order to keep it nice and grow into a nice well shape, especially if you train it, for example, on a wall. And to train wisteria, there are just two numbers that you need to remember, which are two and seven. And that implements to the month and when you need to go in there and strip them back and also how you prune them. So two obviously stands for February. So what you do in February is, very easy, you go in there and you just look at all those stringy tiny branches that you have and since the wisteria has no foliage it is super easy to get in there and prune it back. You just look at that stringy strands and then you just count from the main stem like one, two butts and then you make a cut on the angle so you remove a lot of last year's old uh, stems that you don't need anymore. In July, this is when it gets a little more tricky because what happened is Obviously, it was terrace in full foliage and it has a lot and a lot of long stringy stems, almost like an octopus in a way. It really looks like this creature growing off your wall. Then you go in with your secateurs again and you try and count like one, two, three, four, seven butts and then you make a cut on the angle again and like that. You always make sure that your wisteria stays compact and a nice, good a growing habit and you also encourage it to produce flower buds because it flowers best on these pruned stems. Whenever you buy a wisteria I would always recommend you buy a wisteria that already has buds as this one because the wisteria that is on the kitchen hardly ever comes to bloom. I bought it in a container when it was just like one tiny stringy thingy basically and that had a I don't know I really don't know what the problem is I think the plant is quite young and I think this is why it doesn't really come to bloom while the one next to the garage which we don't really see from the upper garden here which is a little bit of a shame always comes to bloom it's always beautiful but I mean it's in the kitchen garden so whenever I work in the kitchen garden that is a nice thing about it one last quick thing I really want to tell you because I think this is quite intriguing and I did a research again because I read it a couple of years ago in a magazine so I just wanted to be sure there are two different kinds of wisteria. There are Chinese wisterias and there are Japanese wisterias. And the intriguing thing is, you know, they wind, but the Chinese wisteria winds anti-clockwise while the Japanese wisteria winds clockwise, which is completely odd because whenever you grow any plant that winds on the Northern Hemisphere, they will always wind anti-clockwise. And whenever you're gardening on the Southern Hemisphere, your plants, they will definitely wind clockwise. And this is the same effect, for example, if you have water in your bathtub and you pull the plug in the northern hemisphere, the water is always going to rinse off anti-clockwise, while in the southern hemisphere it's going to rinse off clockwise. So why is the Japanese wisteria growing into the wrong direction? And that answer really goes back into time. Now comes my, well, geologically, geological well, knowledge, whatever you want to call it. Um, back, back, back in days, Japan was actually part of the Southern Hemisphere. And in the past million years, what happened is that all the islands of Japan, they just moved further north. So the wisteria is actually from Japan, a plant that originally grew on the Southern Hemisphere. But now Japan is part of the Northern Hemisphere. So the wisteria decided, no, I'm still going to wind exactly how I did it millions of years ago on the Southern Hemisphere. So I'm going to grow Wisteria Shiro Captain Fuji. And Captain Fuji, I mean, how much more Japanese can you get? So I checked and I was like, so this plant is bound to grow clockwise. It doesn't, it's anti-clockwise. So now I'm really confused because I was like, why? Why is it doing that? I was like, okay, is it in momentum? Well, I finally have a label here and it's a wrong one. So let's see what colors of bloom I'm going to expect. Is it really going to be white? Is it not going to be white? Maybe there's a Chinese one with a white bloom but a wrong label. I'm confused. I don't know what happens. So I really wanted to share some lovely information with you. And now the prime example that I have here does not do how it's meant to do. So, well, hope it's still going to be beautiful. All I'm going to do now is put it in this container. And when it comes to that, I just use a good garden soil plant at that level, put some starting fertilizer in there, obviously organic bone chips, mulch it. And then I try and find just the perfect location in the little pot garden that we did over there. I think that was the last pot garden video that I did with you.
Wisteria is planted and I already arranged it in the little pot garden that I think is going to look so cute when it comes to bloom. Obviously can't wait to give you updates on how it looks when those blooms are going to open and cascade down. Little hint of advice, whenever you buy a plant in the garden center and you're overly excited and want to put it already in its container, do it but don't take it back out again because what happened is like the entire plastic container of the uh, wisteria got stuck in the concrete container and I was like, Great, how do I get that out now? So obviously Logic and Daniel, never a good combination. Nevertheless, I'm really excited to show you how everything looks now. Had a good play with Alfie and I can tell you today we're gonna to go to the groomer. So the little fluffy bear is gonna look drastically different next time around. But what I wanna show you obviously is a little pot arrangement here. So you can't really tell a lot that that is a wisteria though, but once it comes to bloom, I think those white cascading flowers are gonna be really wonderful with the hatch as a backdrop. And I always think that wisteria and evergreens are a winning combination. So the use here that we potted up there, I think is gonna be so beautiful as well. Hyacinth and now in bloom, absolutely glorious. But when the wisteria comes to bloom, I think they're gone over. But the pansies, they really kicked in with a lot and a lot of growth. Remember how tiny they were when we planted those and they really grew into strong, robust little plants. A lot of bots are appearing. Absolutely happy with the color combinations. Tulips, a lot of leaves. So I think one point they're also gonna be very tall and beautiful. This is Queen of Night. So a very dark tulip matching the dark foliage of the Eucharist there. And guess what already started? Da -da. Dandelions. Oh yeah, it's that time of the year when I start picking them because they are, I know they're good for wildlife, but we have, we have a lot of good for wildlife. And this is the one part good for wildlife where I'm a little like, oh, I, like to have the upper hand on those. That is it for today's video. I think this is gonna be a rather quick, short, cute project, but I'm really happy with the outcome and I'm gonna tell you how it's gonna look. I'm gonna use my favorite word, whimsical, because I think when it comes to wisteria, they just have this fairy-esque quality about them when they come to bloom. And in case if you're not growing a wisteria in your own garden, just give it a thought. You will not regret it. I can tell you they're just wonderful plants. Um, they come with a scent, which is also wonderful, next to a terrace or a main entrance. And even though they don't flower extremely long, maybe four weeks at max six weeks, really depending on your weather situation. But during those six weeks, they are so magnificent and they bring so much joy to your garden and to you. So just give it a thought and try and find a location in your own garden. I can tell you it won't be very long up until I drive to Germany for a week, maybe 10 days I need to see and there's still so many projects in the garden going on now so I really want to take you with me to the veg garden and I thought about doing a little front garden to a video like spring in the front garden or something like that because it looks rather beautiful there right now and it would be a shame not to really show you the situation so those are just those ideas that are lingering around in my head at the moment but this is going to be another day I just want to say thank you so much for watching today's video hope you enjoyed it and I would love to welcome you in my garden very soon again take care guys bye